I'm here with Dennis Anderson, a pioneer, driver, world finals champion. I mean, legend, can we, obviously, is it awkward that I'm saying this right into your face? Or you, no, you're used no, to it. No, you, no, you it's good. It time, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm a four-time world champion. Let's see. Okay, and Grave Digger has been out there for a long time. Been yep. out there for going on 43 years. Man, now you inspire me. You inspire so many people out there and people that are coming to the Warrior Rally in Kernersville. My question for you, though, who has inspired you? I would say, you know, when I think of somebody inspiring me to keep me going in my low times would have been, like, I wanted, like, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. I was a fan of Dale Earnhardt's NASCAR back in the day. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the Dale Earnhardt of monster trucks. Mm. And, and in my eyes and in my book, I was. Yeah. And I still am. Or oh, you were definitely the intimidator and still are. <laughs> right. right? The monster it. truck intimidator. Uh, and uh, what was your favorite nickname you ever got? Uh, my favorite was uh, the Black and Green Wrecking Machine, mm -hmm. and the least favorite was One Ron Anderson. Oh, you didn't like One Ron Anderson? I did not like it that I, great. I've heard you tell the story, of course, about how you got One Ron Anderson, and but I did not know you didn't like it. No, I did not like it. I did like it when afterwards, uh -huh. but when I got clean to the fame of it, I didn't like it then. Oh, it was embarrassing yeah. for uh. me. <laughs> but then after I got worked through the hard times, I was honestly proud of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm still one Ron Anderson back there somewhere. Yeah, you are. Well, we'll see because we got King Sling, uh, Extreme King Sling behind us and uh, the King Sling Mud Truck over there about to compete at North First South yep. on September 9th, right at the Muddy yes, Motorsports yeah, Park. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it may or may not be wadded up after that weekend. So, That's right. But you're not driving it on that weekend, or are you? No, uh, Weston is. Weston, and he's just, he, how proud are you he, of that I kid? am so proud of him, man. I'm, I'm, he ticks me off. <laughs> no, he's so but good. That's why I like him, you know, because he is just a thorn in y'all's side. Yeah, you know, Weston's his youngest, what is he, 19? Is he, he's not even 21. No, he, yeah, he's 21. Is he, he just 21? turned 21 okay. in April. See, he's 21 years old, and here he is. He's out here kicking our butts. I just got to compete against him for the first time in Charlotte in an arena a few weeks ago. He was infuriating. Right. Infuriating. He won everything. Yes. Except for racing. And you, you know who swept racing that weekend? Was it you? Old Mohawk Warrior. Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah. But then he kicked my butt and everything else. So. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. You all do right. good. You, uh, yeah, you, yeah. you hey. reproduce uh, well because your kids can all drive monsters. Well, what can I say, man? I'm very fortunate. <laughs> my kids are great. <laughs> and all these are North Carolina trucks that I bought here in North Carolina. Grandma, I paid seventy-five dollars for it. What? Yes, for the right, body. So, I'm telling you, it was, okay. it, and the body was immaculate. It was, it was a, um, it was a painter's truck. Huh. You know, a house painter, and, yeah. it was, and it was an old guy retired. I went up to his house, knocked on the door, and when I saw him, I figured he was going to tell me to stop snooping around or yeah. going to cuss me out. But I would look in the winter time; all the honeysuckle was dead, and the weeds were dead. So you can see everybody's junk behind their house. Yeah. He had this and a bunch of other old cars back in the woods. The frame and everything you're saying. Oh, it's a whole truck. The whole oh, truck. Yeah, I went up there and I paid 75 bucks and I put I put two tires on it. Yeah. I made an angle iron freaking old tow bar and I mm -hmm. put it behind a 65 Chevrolet old truck that I had and pulled that thing back to the shop, you know, working at the granary. Yeah. And um and then the same thing with this, once I got on tour with that. I'm riding down the road and I would pass this. This came from Little Washington, North Carolina. Hmm. And this was a Clearview television repair truck. It <laughs> <laughs> had, had an advertisement on the side. All right, and when you're saying it was a, uh, a television repair truck, was it just the frame? I mean, no, I no, it was went... a whole truck. It was a whole truck. And this thing, it had a, it was a deluxe. It had all the chrome. Because I remember I got it and one of the old guys came up there and he goes, I can't believe you're going to tear that truck all to pieces all that chrome. Those things right there were the nicest panel trucks ever made. <laughs> and, um, and that was the first uh, 1950 Chevy truck. Mm. Because, you know, back in the day, we were 51 Fords. That's a Ford, mm. that's a Ford. I always had Ford trucks with Chevy motors in them. Mm. And I tried to get a Chevrolet sponsor. I couldn't do it because I had a Ford body. Yeah. So, and that's what the guy told me at the Chevrolet oh. place. So then I got off Chevrolet and I went back to the Chevrolet place and the guy said, well, unfortunately, we're not selling 1950 Chevy panel trucks. So that's, that's when I said, screw the corporate world. I don't need them. I'm gonna, just going to go do my deal and uh, my fans will be my sponsor. So yeah. that's how it went down. 
and it never had a corporate sponsor. It's in corporate businesses, but corporate money, that truck always, the fans always pay for that truck. All right, so when you tell, one of my favorite stories that you tell is about, you know, and, and, I, and it wasn't one time, I know it was a lot of times, where you would go to a track, you didn't have the money to get home. Yeah. Right. And when you talk about really the birth of freestyle, is there one of these trucks? What, which of these trucks was your first freestyle run in? This. Grandma. Really? Grandma. Yes. <laughs> Grandma, See, I was thinking yeah. it'd be like somewhere around. No, here. it was. It, it, was, it, 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 it was the transition, and it was this truck right here that was like the first when we were doing uh, purse racing, and um, and I was always throwing a drive shaft for doing something, and then I turned around and built this. And this truck broke worse than that truck. <laughs> so, you want to go back but to the, Yeah, but this truck was faster. You know, I had more. Uh -huh. I had a more powerful motor in it. This truck ran on gas. It was a 671 with carburetors and stuff yeah. like that. You know. And, yeah. So you go out there in Grandma, and you can't. Yeah. You, you can't go, get. You can't get home. No, right? I know. So I tell me the story. I, about, yeah, I, it's I my favorite story. Yeah, and I can't get home. And there was. Um, there was uh, like a West Lebanon, Lebanon Valley yep. Speedway, Howard Commander, and I go up and I, I'm going to borrow money from him. And I'm going to, you know, because it was not like, you know, there was no cell phones. There was none of that stuff back in the day. So some kind of way I was going to end up paying him back. But I just yep. need to get enough to get out of New York to get back to North Carolina. And he was such a great guy and still is to this yep. day. He gave me $1,000. And $1,000 was more money than I was making back then because, you know, back then you had to be the fast qualifier and you would make 750 bucks mm. if you were fast qualifier. That's why I always broke the truck. And my crew guys would go, why in the hell did you run so hard first time out? I said, guys, if we get fast qualifier, we're paid. Yeah. I get $750. We're covered. We get home. We can get, we get home. home. We can do <laughs> if I didn't make fast qualifier, I sucked. We couldn't even get back. And I'm telling you, man, I would leave home and it's like, you know, no fuel gauge, just checking it with a stick and going, ah, oh, God, man, I hope we can, you know, get to the track and I get money. As soon as we get out of there, I'm going to have to get some diesel fuel. Yeah. And I mean, I've been on the track before and I had the track guys, mm -hmm. you know, hey, how about giving me a shot of fuel in my tank yeah. just to make sure I can get to the fuel stop, you know, and it was pitiful. I mean, it was like I was so, I don't know, I was just so into, you know, determined with the truck that I just didn't. You know, stuff like that wasn't really a bad hurdle. Yeah. For me, you know, it wasn't like I would stress out and probably lay down and have a stroke now. <laughs> I think we all would. Yeah. All right, so first freestyle run then and you went to you went to the track owner one time. Yes, and I went how did yes. that conversation go? The I first went time? I went to Ed and I told Ed, I said, Hey, I you know, dude, I got T shirts and I came out and I was trying to do the fast qualifying thing. I spit a transfer case, yoke, a bunch of mess off. And I wanted to get, uh, and I had everything to fix it with. So I told him, I said, look, I, I, you know, if you'll let me put this thing back together, I want to come out and I want to do a freestyle. And he says, what do you mean a freestyle? I go, just let me go crazy on the track and hit the cars backwards and just run all over the place. And, um, and just for the people and I need to sell yeah. my shirts. And he goes, he just kind of agreed to it and said after the race mm -hmm. and he was kind of like well let's make it quick mm -hmm. you know and i'm like and i was ready i was sitting there ready to go and i remember taking off in this old thing and hitting the first jump and i was like i don't even care because if it jumps and it's just like <laughs> one big jump that's all it's going to do yeah. it's going to break and i hit this big jump it hits the ground it bounces around and i'm like oh god it's still going so i just keep going and going and going i just felt like that day the gravedigger god was with me huh. because I went jump after jump after jump and I had smoke pouring out of the back of it. It ran so long, yeah. motor got hot, transmission got hot, and I ended up stopping <laughs> with one flat tire and going, yeah. Well, all right, so, I mean, was everyone shocked or were they, was it no, thunderous? They thunderous. Would, no, everybody was, it, they were shocked, you know, like people behind the scenes were shocked as well as I was. Yeah. The, the crowd was roaring, you know, and it was, and I was doing it in front of like, 4,500 people, man. And it was in, it was in Grandma. Yes, it was yeah. in Grandma. And I've had, um, and I had Adam, you can see, after we got going with this, mm -hmm. I had Adam setting, I know maybe he was on Grandma. Mm. He was like two. Huh. He was like two years old. And I got these pictures that I paid like 12 cents for. 
and I was selling for a dollar a piece. You know, eight by ten glossy photos yeah. of the truck. And I had him setting on no it wasn't, it was this truck. Because it had a steel front clip on it then. Okay. So Adam was like, and I told him, I said, well, this will be cute. The family will like it. I'm going to put him on the hood. And I'm going to have him up there. And he had a whole case of them. And I said, you know, hand these pictures to the people when they come and tell them, Grave Digger Photos, one dollar. Yeah. So he was going, Grave Digger Photos, and he was handing all these pictures out. <laughs> and they weren't paying for them. They were just free. <laughs> and I just felt like so cheesy that I just wanted to go, oh, God, Bill, give them away. We have to get fuel money. We have yeah. to do whatever, you know. And, um, and I think Julie came over there and saved the day as mom. <laughs> Course, Adam. <laughs> Adam likes everyone too much. He, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he still gives them all away, doesn't he? No, it's Don't you? Well, you, well, you like everybody yeah. too much. Uh, and that, that was in Lima, Ohio, when he done that. <laughs> you were on the hood of this, and it was fairly new. I had the steel transition from a competition truck. It's got this big goofy chassis mm -hmm. that I put underneath it. Because this is it right here. This is one of the competition truck. And, um, and then there, you know, I transitioned into the sound truck. Mm. Went across the Curry Tuck Sound. It was like a seven mile swim. Um, you know, going across the going across the Curry Tuck the, Sound. Was that a crab cage? Yeah, crab pot. No crab pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to dodge them. They're all over oh, there going, okay. you know, and I just got that and just thrown up there like, mm. just to let everybody know that it actually went through the Curry Tuck Sound where they crab. Yeah. But I went from Poplar Branch Landing over to a well-known uh, the Whalehead Club Mansion. Mm. It's a um, it was a mansion that was built back in the '40s over on the other side for duck hunting. But yeah. And it's at the lighthouse, and I came right up on the on the lawn. Yeah. Everybody running beside you as you yeah. come out. The swim truck. Huh. And then all of this. This is 30th anniversary. That was the best anniversary and probably will be the best anniversary ever, mm. ever stamped by Grave Digger. It will never happen like that again. Mm. Just because of that tour right there was, uh, you know, was a couple of million dollars in damage. Because I got these bodies made and one weekend I would run a green one. Yeah. And the next weekend, weekend I would run purple. So we would change them out. I told him, give me, you know, I need like nine bodies. I'm doing nine stadiums. And I'm going to grind one in the ground at every stop. <laughs> so that was an expensive tour for the company. <laughs> <laughs> Any regrets on that? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. And then this, you know, the haunted house was a part. That thing traveled all around the United States. The photo oh, wall really? for the kids getting the windows. We didn't want to throw it away, and I had a little space here yeah. that I had a truck that didn't quite work out to get finished in time. So I put it in here for the kids mm -hmm. so they can have a little photo off. We got, well, we got at least one tombstone there. Oh, yeah, we got yeah. you in there. All right, that's yeah. good. All, all, the, all, all the best ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree all the good Yeah. Ones. And then this right here is my last ride. Oh man. So yeah, this was my last ride, my 35th anniversary. That is the actual chassis that I had my, uh, my crash in mm. in uh, Tampa, Florida, Raymond James Stadium. And um, that was the last time that I was held driving a Grave Digger truck. Man. And that was the beginning of my 35th anniversary tour and the end of man. it. Man. And that was year 35 then, right? Is that uh, so? Yeah, it was that, 20, yeah, 2017. Yeah, that was, that was, that was my 35th anniversary. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going on Grave Digger, you know, 43rd. Yeah. Hmm. Was this? Were these the heads that came off of it on the after the crash yeah. or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you crack the heads? No, 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 okay. no. No, these are blow ups. This is oh, okay. this is some of my tours that I've done. Okay. So okay. I'm, you can see some of the footage. I'm just crashing motors. This yeah. is the motor. This oh. is the actual motor right here. Huh. And they say the crank and everything's broken. I think it's still good. I want to try it. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll expect nothing less. <laughs> 